Today on BRS TV, we're going to discuss selecting fish for a new reef tank. We'll cover common, easy to care for fish, some fish newer reefers should avoid, and some tips on tank husbandry. Fish are generally broken up into two basic categories, aggressive and reef safe. In a reef tank, we're looking for a fish that won't bother corals, snails, crab, shrimp, or smaller fish. Smaller all-in-one tanks like these Nuvos have become popular, so I figured we should start off with some fish common to this smaller 16 to 40 gallon range. The most popular is probably the clownfish. Most common clowns are fun to watch, colorful, and don't tend to bother anything else in the tank, which makes them excellent choices for most reef tanks. Most people will get two, so they pair up. All clowns start off as males when they're small, and the most dominant one will turn into a female. She'll continue to grow and eventually be much larger than her male counterpart. Clownfish are also one of the few fish that commonly lay eggs in a captive environment, and many reefers will raise them as a fun extension of the hobby. Shrimp and goby pairs are also very popular in almost any size tank. This is one of those unique relationships almost anyone can appreciate. The shrimp will excavate and maintain a tunnel system for both of them to live in, while the goby, sometimes in pairs, protects the entrance. If you watch closely, the shrimp will almost always keep an antennae on the goby's body. If the goby senses danger, it will flick its tail and the shrimp will dart for safety into the hole. Another popular smaller fish is the lawnmower blenny. This is one of those fish that earns its keep by constantly eating algae on the rock work or other areas of the tank. They're not only cool, but can be one of the first lines of defense against an algae outbreak. Beyond that, dartfish, various other gobies, and smaller wrasses can be cool additions. As your tank gets larger, the options start to expand a bit. I think the best addition to a mid-size or larger tank are tangs, particularly yellow or purple tangs. They're not only easy to keep active, colorful fish, they're also voracious algae eaters. A very large portion of new reefers are going to encounter an algae issue at some point or another. Fish like this will not only help put that battle out as far as possible, but they're also an invaluable tool combined with good feeding and maintenance habits to make sure you beat the algae outbreak or never encounter it in the first place. I also like basically anything that schools. Blue and green chromis are not only one of the most affordable fish in our hobby, but also amongst the coolest as well. If you can get enough of them, they'll dart back and forth in the tank and school. They also bed down at night in your acros or other corals, which is another cool behavior. Anthas are also another cool schooling fish which have incredible coloring. They do require more frequent feedings because they are very active, so your maintenance schedule and filtration equipment will have to account for that. I think most beginners will have the best luck with Bartlett and Liretail Anthias. Most of the other species should be left to more seasoned reefers. Beyond that, pairs of reef safe wrasses and other tang species are also super popular. There are some fish we recommend newer reefers stay away from. The first group is because they have a poor survival rate and require special diets. Many of the antheas are in this category and require several feedings a day, coupled with high quality water, which are two things that don't typically go together very well unless you have a rigorous maintenance schedule and high performance filtration. Twin spot gobies are another example of a really cool but difficult fish to keep. They spend most of the day sifting the sand for small critters to eat. For this reason, they do best in tanks that have been up for over a year with a large volume of sand and microfauna population. Even then, the mortality rate is pretty high. Really not the best fish for a newer reefer. One of the most popular fish in this group is the mandarin, and kind of a conundrum because it's one of the hardest and easiest fish to keep. It's absolutely the only fish that would still be alive a year from now if I stopped feeding the tank today but really only because we cared enough to create the right environment before adding it to the tank. These are one of the coolest looking fish you can add, but they typically only eat their natural diet of live copepods, which are tiny crustaceans found in the tank. If there isn't a healthy population of copepods, they'll eat them all and slowly starve to death. They do best in larger established tanks, which have been up for close to a year, where the population of copepods has had a chance to build up a sustainable population. The copepod should also have an area to safely reproduce where the mandarin can't get at them. This can be achieved with a refugium in the sump or on the back of the tank. Rock selection can also help quite a bit. 
rock with a large hole network like Pucani can provide a tremendous amount of internal surface area for the pods to reproduce and maintain their population. Randomly, some mandarins do begin eating prepared foods like pellets or shrimp, but many of them will only eat food that just happens to pass in front of its face. It's fairly rare for them to develop an active feeding response where they immediately seek out food that's been added to the tank. Recently, ORA has had success breeding and producing young mandarins that actively eat prepared foods. This is really your best bet for newer tanks. But honestly, with a bit of patience and planning, you can create a never-ending supply of their natural diet, and that's really the best solution in the end. The second group includes many fish that may bother other fish, shrimp, or crabs in the tank. Most of these are fairly hit or miss. Damsels, many dotty backs, basslets, and some hawkfish have the potential to be fairly mean when they get older. Most eels and linefish, even the dwarf varieties, are also not considered to be reef safe because they'll eat pretty much anything that will fit in their mouths. I've seen both take down some pretty impressively sized fish considering their small size. It's also wise to try and limit the amount of fish that share the same habitat and natural food source. People often focus on an arbitrary number of fish that can be added to any size tank, but I spend more time thinking about the available habitat. For the most part, fish either hang out in the sand, perch on the rock, or spend most of their time swimming in the water column. To prevent them from fighting, select a mix of fish that utilize all of these spaces and use some common sense as to how many can live comfortably in each area. There are also fish like tangs, which are highly territorial because they share the same supply of a limited food source, which in this case is algae. Many people recommend only keeping a single tang in an average size tank. If you plan on keeping more than one, the best results are often achieved by adding them at the same time. If you add them at different dates, the first one will typically be very aggressive to the second. Keep in mind there's a wide range of experience and opinions on caring for fish that varies from extremely conservative to fairly reckless. Today's advice focuses on newer reefers and where our team has seen a lot of easy to replicate success. Through skill or luck, some reefers have been successful keeping almost every fish in basically any scenario. And much of what the community knows about reefing today is a result of this process and advanced reefers sharing information on how to replicate their success. One thing to keep in mind is that people who are successful are way more willing to publicly share their experiences than the people who starve their fish to death or watch them get killed by aggressive tank mates. As always, the best advice is from a like-minded person you trust who has maintained a long-term successful reef tank. That wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes come out, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit BulkReefSupply.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.